talk about the Word of God. It's a beautiful thing. Let me ask you a question. Now you heard the verse I just read, right? About what the Lord said, it shall come to pass if the Israelites break God's commandments that all these curses shall come upon them and overtake them. Right? You heard that. Jump down to verse 32. I want you to explain it. Well, who this happened to? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So Moses, I want you to read slower, brother. It's not a race. Read the verse again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, I got a question, but before I read, before I ask you a question on that, I'm going to read verse 3, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Here's another curse that came on the Israelite. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst. Meaning you must serve your enemies. If you want food, that's the hunger. You got to go to your enemy's supermarket. If you are thirsty, you got to pay your water bill, pay your water. And the nakedness. If you want to clothe your body, you got to go to the stores of your enemy. And in wants of all things. And in want, if you want anything, Pastor, what's your name? Elton. Elton? Elton. Okay, brother Hell. It's he says in the wants of all things, meaning, for example, if you want education, you gotta go to your enemy. Even if you want something like toilet tissue, guess who you gotta go to? Your enemies. Watch this. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Now, when we look at world history, Pastor, Pastor Hell, who what race of people had yokes of iron on their neck that had to serve their enemies? and want of all things for food, clothing, shelter. What race of people? The unrighteous one. Let's look out here. I want you to look right here. Look at me. Look at, look at, look at, look at me right here. You see these brothers right here? You see the sisters right here? Let's think, where are you from? I'm from Amsterdam. You're from Amsterdam. That's over in around Sweden over there? Europe. Okay. What is your father? Let me tell I just need to know a little history about you. What's your father? Sudan. Oh, Sudan. That's in Africa. Uh, Sudan is uh, up from Brazil. Oh, oh up from Brazil. Oh. So, I got nervous about South America. Okay, all okay. crazy. I got nervous for a second. So now, Pastor, during the 1600s, there was a... Uh, oh, now, we, we read about the slave ships. Uh, we read about the yokes of iron, right? We read about the sons and daughters being given to another people, right? Now read verse 68. Stay with me. Stay with me. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring the Israelites into Egypt again. Who say that again? That's slavery. Very good. Read it again. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. What race of people went into slavery with ships? The blacks. Oh, oh. So past the hell. You got to help me out here. You said the blacks. What does this, do you know what this means? This means that we are the Israelites that Moses was speaking to. We are not North Americans. We are not South Americans. We are not Jamaicans. We are not Guyanese, right? No, no. We are people from Africa. <laughs> you fell off the horse. You fell off the horse, Pastor. <laughs> you know, I'm a, you know. We got a bear. We got a bear. It's a problem. Yeah, right, right. I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, bear with me. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I want you to be able to hold Deuteronomy. Go to Luke 21. Luke 21. See, I like this guy. This is a nice brother here. He said, after all that, Moses is speaking to the Israelites. He said, we come from Africa. I'm going to show you how the Israelites got into Africa. Then I'm going to bring us up to speed. Okay? Luke 21, you got what I want? Call it and read it. Luke 21, verse 21. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea start above it. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So Christ was speaking to the Israelites. He said, when you see Jerusalem come past with armies, meaning the Romans came against the Israelites, Christ said, know that the desolation thereof is near, meaning the destruction. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He said, let you Israelites that are in Judah flee, run to the mountains. Now I'm going to show you. Hold on, give me Matthew 2.13. When the angel came to Joseph, he told Joseph to run and hide somewhere. I'm going to show you where he ran and hid. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Egypt. Where's Egypt? Egypt in Africa. Very good. Egypt is in Africa. The northeast side. Now, come on, brother. Matthew 2, verse 13. Matthew 2, verse 13. And when they were...
Lord departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take your, the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And flee into Africa, right? So we're in agreement there. The angels said, but where were they? They were in Jerusalem, right? Was Joseph an African or an Israelite of the nation of the tribe of Judah? Joseph is from Israel. Right. He was of the tribe of Judah. Christ is from the tribe of Judah. But God said, hide in Africa. What does that prove? Because could a white man hide in Africa? Ha. No. Why? Because you look in there, wait a minute. Who that white guy over there amongst all them black people? You can spot him, right? The reason God told him to hide in Africa because there was other black people down there that looked like them. Two different races, but they look similar. Okay? Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So where do you think the Israelites ran to? The same place the angels said, go hide. Go hide. Where was that? They fled into Africa. They stuck on Egypt, like you said, is on the northeast coast. So you had an abundance, millions of Israelites in the year 70 AD that ran into Africa. So now the Israelites ran into Africa to hide to all the black people down there. But a strange thing happened. Get me Joel, chapter 3. A strange thing happened while we were in Africa. Because sometime in the year 1600, there was something called the slave trade. Let's read about that in the Bible. Joel, chapter 3. I want to start at verse 2. Joel, chapter 3, verse 2. Just bear with me, Pastor. I'm going to take you on a journey, but it's for a good reason. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So God's plan is to gather all the nations. Pres people get mad at President Bush because he started war with Iran, Iraq. But that's God's plan. His plan is to gather all nations into the Middle East. I will plead with them there for my people. God's plan is to plead with all those nations for his people, Pastor Hell. And for my heritage, Israel. He's going to plead with them for his heritage, Israel, the Israelites, whom they have scattered amongst the nations, whom they have scattered among the nations. We're going to pause right there, Pastor. How were the Israelites scattered? That's a hard one. You know the answer, but you ain't putting the pieces together. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Never leave Deuteronomy 28 because that's going to be help be with your foundation. When you read these other prophecies, go back to Deuteronomy 28. You're going to understand. Oh, this is what happened. Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, start at 64. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Do you hear that? The Lord shall scatter the Israelites among all people. How? Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Meaning slavery. Again with ships. With what? With ships. How did our people get over here throughout Brazil, throughout Central America? With ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We have not seen our homeland no more. It's been almost 400 years we've been here. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. When we sold unto our enemies, this is the Bible. It's, it's not racist. This is the Bible. For bondmen and bondwomen. Slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you. You had Malcolm X tried. Martin Luther King tried. Sojourner Truth. Many great Marcus Garvey. You had many great leaders rise up amongst our people. But none of them could redeem us, right? Go back to Joel 3. Now we understand what that plot means. Joel 3 and 2. I will also gather all nations. I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they are scattered amongst the nations. How were we scattered amongst the nations, Pastor? We were scattered on ships in slavery. That's what happened. And what happened after we were scattered on slave ships in slavery? And parted my land. Then the Bible says the nations did what? I parted my land. Who parted our homeland? You got the Israeli white man and the Arab Palestinians. They're fighting over a land that 
does not belong to them, either group, because the Bible says the true Israelites were scattered into slavery. Now watch this. And they have cast lots for my people, and have, and have given a boy for an harder. You, you know what it means when it says they have cast lots for my people? It's talking about the auction slave, meaning what? You got, the white men had slave farms, but they said, I need more slaves. So they would get the biggest, strongest black men and have sex with their own sisters and mothers to bring forth other slaves and have a lot, strong ones. Read that part again. And have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine. Then it says sold a girl for what? And sold a girl for wine. All history books say that they sold black girl children for wine. We're reading the Bible. They don't teach us this in church. Come on. That they might drink. That they might party. They was raping our daughters in slavery. Yeah. What have ye to do with me? Or Tyree and Zida. When you read Tyree and Zidon in the book of Deuteronomy, Tyree and Zidon were Africans. They were not Israelites. They were Hamite Africans. Come on. What have ye to do with me, or Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Palestine today are the Arabs. They call it Palestine, right? So it's talking about in that verse, the Africans and the Arabs. What did they do? Will he render me recompense? Meaning payback, judgment. And if he recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and my gold. They robbed the temples of the Israelites. And have carried into your temples my godly and pleasant things. Goodly and pleasant things. Come on. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have he sold unto the Grecians. So it says that the Africans and the Arabs, Pastor Hell, sold the children of Judah and Jerusalem to who? Read that verse again. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have he sold unto the Grecians. Who are the Grecians? That's very good. The people from Greece. The white man, Pastor. What are we reading about Pastor Hell? The slave trade. What book? Joel, chapter 3. It says the Africans and the Arabs sold the children of Israel to the Greeks. Did that happen to us? That's right. It happened to us, period. It's all talking about us. So we're reading about our history. So all ministers like yourself, we got to start teaching the truth. Where it happened in Genesis chapter, I think, 9. What do you want in Genesis 9? Tell me. Can you go to Genesis 9? Tell me, Pastor, before we get it. I want to tell you about the, 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 the three sons of uh, Noah. Oh, yes. We, 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 we read that, Pastor. Very good. The three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jack. The what? The white people from the Netherlands. They started, the slavery started in Holland, in, uh, in, in, in Rotterdam. And they went to Africa, in Ghana, and they took the, the, the blacks. Who were the blacks that they got? They got the blacks from Africa. Which blacks? What did God call those blacks that was made slaves? How they call it? The Israelites. You, you got a short, okay. you got a short uh, uh, memory. Uh, uh, memory. I know what, what, what you say, but they took them from there and bring them all over the place. That's right. But... That's Bible prophecy, Pastor. So when you go to your church, you got to start teaching those black men and women of the slave trade who they really are, that they're the Israelites. Because look at our, look at our people out here. We are, our people are confused out here. They don't know who they are. They hate it. We, we hate each other. Is that right? You see that? Our people hate each other. Why? Because many churches have been teaching lie after lie after lie. And I hope it ends with you. You don't talk about slavery in your church? What you talk about that lie? We come from they, those days on the radio. So you teach about the blacks, yes, but now we, you, you got to put a name to those blacks. You can't just say blacks. You got to say they are the children of Israel. And you got to use Bible scripture to prove what you say, like we're doing. You understand, right, sister? Yes. They got to start teaching the truth, right? All praises. I, I'm hearing all these yeses. And I, I pray that our people. Rip. You got to fly, sis? Yeah. What do you want to say? When you, when you um, teach about something, you have to have something to back it up. So, you get what I mean? If you're going to tell me not to keep, you have to have a scripture where 
teaching the truth that we're the Israelites according to the Bible yes. because we've been divided into all these different nationalities you got Jamaicans against the uh, Haitians the Haitians against the Americans nobody likes Brazil so what because we've been divided like Psalms 83 give me that Psalms 83 watch this pastor help you got our phone number pastor help you ain't got our phone number it's on that flyer you got a flyer Okay, we got to stay in touch. I want you to call up. Watch this. Psalms 83 and verse 2. Psalms 83, verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Who's the enemies of God that have lifted up the head? You forgot, Pat, the enemies of God. You know where we go and go back. See, Pastor Hell has a very short memory. I told him, hold to Deuteronomy 28, and you forgot that quick. Oh, 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 what language you speak? Dutch? Dutch, okay, it's a language barrier. Right, 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 language barrier. So now, it said the enemies of God have lifted up their head. Let's see who the enemies are. Deuteronomy 28, and we want verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Meaning the Lord shall bring you into slavery. Again, with ships. Slave ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see no more again. You won't see your true homeland no more again. And there, and there when you get off the slave ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You will be sold to who? Your enemies. Your enemies. Slave men and burn women. Slave women. So who's the enemies we were sold to, Pastor Health? We were sold to the white. Very good. We were sold to the white man. Now go back to Psalms 83 and 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Who's the enemies of God that have lifted up their head? The white man. That's right, Pastor. Or when you when you got the the basic principle that you got to keep the Old Testament and the New Testament, they all go together like this. When you break them apart, say it again. It's one book. Very good. It's one book. Now watch this, Pastor. Watch this. I'm going to show you the, the, the purpose of Jesus Christ. You talk about salvation in your church, right, Pastor? What is salvation? What is salvation? Christ is going to save us from what? Save us from our sins. Save, you heard his answer? Save us from our sins. Give me Luke. Now that's a generic statement, because when I was going to, not going, but I was studying theology, I was reading the books that the white man gave to me to read, and I was saying, you know, a lot of this stuff in these books contradict this. So like your answer, you said Christ is coming to save us from our sin. Watch this, Luke 1, 68. Luke 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Who's the horn of salvation? In, Dave, in David's house, Christ. As he speak by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be What is Christ going to save us from? All that hate. Read that part again for Pastor Hell. That we should be, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So who is Christ going to save us from? He's going to save us from our enemy and the, and those that hate us. So who are our enemies and who hates us? The one that hates us are the whites. The whites. Do you hear that? Oh, see that? Now I'm glad your mind is catching on. That, say it again. It's the white people. That's right. All praises. See, the Bible's very easy once you got the connecting points. Very easy. But when you listen to these Christian things out here, it confuses you. Like I find when I ask many pastors, what, like for example, um, give me a question. I'll get Christmas. Are we supposed to celebrate Christmas? 
I, su I celebrate Christmas. Okay, he said he celebrates Christmas. I'm going to show you something in the Bible. He said, why not? Jeremiah 10. I'm going to show you something. Now, this is only for your edification. It's not to condemn you or hurt your fear, none of that. Because the same statements you give, all of us gave those same answers. So we're just like you. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Jeremiah 10 verse 1. Hear the word which the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen, Pastor Held. Let me ask you a question. In slavery, were we allowed to read and write? No. So where did we learn Christmas and white man Jesus? Where did we learn that from? Well, Jesus. You know what, take, I want you to take your time. Cause you, I see your spirit. <laughs> that's the day that he born. And that's the day we celebrate. My question, you didn't answer my question. Uh, listen, my question, Pastor Hell. If we, the children of the slave trade, were not allowed to read and write, where did we learn Christmas from? Who taught it to us? Because we couldn't read. Who taught us that Christ was white? Teach us. The white people teach us. The white people that Christ was white. Teach us. The white people teach us. The white people taught us that Christmas and white Christ is white. Now listen to this. Learn not the way of the heathens. Learn not the ways of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't worry about the signs of heaven, the stars. Watch this. Listen good, everybody. For the, for the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain. Vain means lies. <laughs> for one cut, for one cut that a tree out of the forest. One cuts a tree out of the forest, Pastor Hell. The work, the work of the hand of the workman with the earth. They deck it, they deck it with silver and with gold. I don't talk about the Christmas tree. I'm talking about the celebration of. I don't. Okay, okay. Now you're a pastor, right? Wait. Now I'm gonna tell you something. See, he's trying to use semantics. He's saying I ain't talking about the tree. I'm just talking about Jesus. You don't use tree. But now, okay. Now here's a question for the pastor. Where in the Bible does it say Christ was born December 25th? You're wrong. You cannot find it in the Bible. There you go. Okay. Give me, give me Luke chapter 2. He said, where's the day Christ was born? Where was it? You got it? Uh, bear with me a second. I got it for you, Pastor. Uh, 41. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Thank you, Yasa. No, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went Jerusalem. So when did Christ become 12 years old? Read it again. Oh. No. Read the verse above it. And the child and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem. It's letting you know when Christ's birthday is. It was nowhere near December 25th. When is the Passover? In the springtime. So now, you as a pastor, you're going to have two choices, pastor, just like we all had. After reading and hearing this, and you know that God says about don't cut a tree down, don't decorate it with silver and gold, if you or anyone out here decides they want to hold on to that, I'm not doing the tree, bro. Okay. So now, if you go to your church and say, Jesus Christ, Jesus, how you say Jesus? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Christos, Jesus Christos was born. If you say he was born December 25th, the dead of winter, you would be what? Then a liar. A liar. Very good. I'm glad you acknowledge that. Because the Bible says when Christ was 12 on the Passover, so that's springtime. So we got to teach the truth. Or we must come back to the truth that we're 
That's right. That's winter. That, so now, as you, when you going back to your church tomorrow? No, no, no. At when? Tomorrow. End of the month. You got a whole lot to bring them at the end of the month. A whole lot. You stop taping too. I noticed that. You, you can't film that. Okay, you should have filmed that when brought it right back to your church and said, "Let me show y'all something." So now, do we have any other questions in the audience? Right, Chad, you got a flyer, brother? Okay, all praises, all praises. Sisters, any questions? Brock Shaw, you want to come up? No, it's 4 o'clock. Time for the go. Okay, it's 4 o'clock. Uh, let me ask you, here's my next and last question. If we want to be saved, as the, as the Israelites, we are coming back to our nationality, then we are the Israelites according to the Bible. You had a question? Yeah, I'm talking, okay, what about the white people that... Because we talk about black. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. My question <laughs> is, right. where do we leave the white? Oh. That's what I was waiting for. Come. Okay. He said, "Wait." <laughs> so now you know where we going. We going to Revelation 13. Right. We going to Revelation 13. Now you believe in the Bible, right? Are you offended at anything the Bible says? He said he's not offended. Y'all hear him? No way is he offended. Okay. His question is, what happened? What about the white stuff? Where did they? What does that leave them? Revelation 13. Start at verse nine. Revelation 13, verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, who captivity means slavery. Read it again. He that he that leadeth into captivity. Before we read on, Pastor, who we've been going over this all day. Who led us into captivity? The white people. Read it again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Did you hear what Christ said? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So according to that, Pastor, what's going to happen when Christ returns to all the whites that led us into slavery? What's going to happen with all? With those that did it, not the children of them. Oh, he said not the children. Uh, Wait, question, Pastor, Isaiah 14. Okay, he said go. not them. What about their children? Yeah. We're going to go to Isaiah 14. Huh? You heard what the brother said? They are still reaping the benefits. Just like you're the descendants of the original slaves, right? Guess what they still call you today? Nigga. In case you didn't know, I'm going to let you know. We're still being persecuted from what our forefathers did. So now like the brother there said, the whites are reaping the benefits. This is all slave money out here. All slave money. Watch this. Isaiah 14 and 21. Isaiah 14. Now you said that you are not going to be offended at anything the Bible says. Okay. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Did you hear what God said? What about what, 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 what did God say? I understand what he said. Oh, nah. Kind of quiet there now, Pastor. We don't read that again. Prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquities, for the iniquities of their father, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with city. You hear that, brother? You hear? This is the Bible. They will never read this to you in the church. <laughs> oh, good. Good for you. You you went up on him. <laughs> Stay out of the church, because these churches will brainwash you and get you to believe in all kind of lies. So the Bible says, prepare slaughter for his children. That they do not rise, that they do not possess the land, that they don't fill the face of the world with cities anymore. That's the judgment, Pastor. Now, if you, if you are a real man of God, you're going to go back to your church, you're going to teach them that they are the Israelites. You're going to teach them what this Bible says and not change the words. You're going to read exactly what it says, and whoever gets offended, let them get offended. You understand that? you got to fly. Okay, well, you have any questions? Okay, so giving all praises to the Most High. You got any questions over here? Come. On. I can't hear you. Okay, his question, Pastor. He said, 
He said, what about the so-called Jews with the black hats and the curly hair, right? Can you tell me about them? Who are they? Okay, he said, he'll listen to me. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Because if we're the Israelites that went into slavery for breaking God's laws, who are the whites that claim they are Israelis? Here's what Christ said, Revelation 2, verse 9. This is why they don't like the New Testament. Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty and poverty because we are broke, broke down people. But Christ said we're rich in spirit. But thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. Do you hear what Christ said? So who are they? Who are the white men that say that they're the Jews? Read it again. He didn't lay. He didn't hear what he said. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. Who are they? That's right. That's what Jesus Christ said that. But they'll never read that to you in church. They'll never read that. Will you read this when you go back to your church? You study it, but do you teach that? I want, I want to go to your church. I want to go to your church. You got my number? Yeah, wait, listen. You got my number? You going to call me? I want to call you. And we're going to pay a visit to Brazil. We're going to go down to your church. Amsterdam, Holland. We're going to go there. You got black people in Holland? A lot. We going. Let's, y'all brothers, get your passports. We going to his church. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.